Barbie and the Princess and the Pauper is a transgender allegory. I can't turn very far because of my headphone cord. Now, yes, this is very different from the usual affair of video creation, and I fully expect for the cardinal sins of not being Danganronpa related and containing positive talking about transcoding in a children's work of art, because that is what the Princess and the Pauper is, art, but I needed a relatively easy video to edit to get back into the swing of things at my new house while still in the process of moving all of my stuff around. And no, uh, you can't see it, but my bed won't always be on the floor. It's just the bed that I wanted from Ikea was not available when I moved in and I'm waiting to get a new one. Anyway, trans allegories in The Princess and the Pauper. Most of the time when people hear me say something is trans, their immediate response is to ask for proof, evidence, anything to protect their little cis minds from the idea that their beloved characters could be part of the dreaded t And my answer to this is to usually say, I'm trans and I like this, which usually doesn't satisfy those groups, even though it is very clearly my opinion and they do not attack people who outright say X is cis is an opinion, but I digress. But this time, I actually do have textual proof. The trans allegory comes from the character of Wolfie, Erica's cat. Now, we may not be consciously aware of it at all times, but the two most common pets, cats and dogs, actually kind of come with weird societal expectations of belonging to a certain gender. Generally, or at least by weird cis people, dogs are considered appropriate for boys, while cats, more so, are considered appropriate for girls. There are stereotypes around women owning more cats than men owning more dogs. Cats get very weirdly sexualized with, you know, newly it's all of the cat girl trends, and while cat boys exist, it's very clearly the variation of the starter point of cat girls, and they're sexualized in very much the same manner that women are sexualized, etc, etc, etc. However, Wolfie does something that's a bit anachronistic for cats. He barks. Generally more associated with the dog, the more masculine appropriate animal. It's generally just treated as, you know, what he does. Wolfie barks. Erica accepts that and loves him. Most of the people that he meets accept it and love him. And those who don't love him at all still acknowledge that he's a cat that barks. Now, if that was my only piece of evidence that made him a trans allegory, I wouldn't be writing this script. But my big piece of evidence is the song that Erica sings in the bathtub, Cat's Meow. After meeting Serafina, talking to her, encountering Peminger, after Erica starts impersonating Annalise, and a few other shenanigans, Wolfie starts feeling insecure about his inability to meow. He attempts to meow for what he hopes is Erica's approval in the bathtub, like how many trans men who present masculine may try to re-closet themselves to gain approval from their family members. Wolfie, however, cannot meow, no matter how hard he tries to do so. Thankfully, however, Erica is a trans ally, trademark, and knows that he's experiencing that unfortunately familiar feeling to all but honestly trans men who throw every other trans man who isn't exactly like them under the bus. The belief that he's faking it. And so she launches into the song, Cat's Meow. Here's where that allegory goes from, yeah, Akamatsu is definitely reaching with that one, to psych, you thought. The lyrics of the song itself make it pretty hard to ignore. The first lyric is this one. You're no status quo calico, so I keep trying to be. Okay, so we know that Wolfie is male, or at least uses he, him pronouns. However, one thing to note about calico cats, the genetic makeup that causes the cat to be calico only happens on the X chromosome, and can only make a cat a calico if they have two X chromosomes. From the ASPCA, Calico cats are predominantly female because their coloring is related to the X chromosome. Two X chromosomes are needed for a cat to have that distinctive tricolor coat. If a cat has an XX pair, she will be female. Male cats have an XY chromosome pair, so they can't be calicos. In other words, a male cat, or a cat designated male at birth, cannot be a calico. We also never hear any other kind of cat patterning or breed type in regards to Wolfie from any other character or anything, so by default, that is the only piece of evidence we have, and he must have been born a calico, and therefore a male cat with XX chromosomes. In addition to that, in the second verse of the song, Erica sings these lyrics. Further suggesting that Wolfie was designated female at birth and socialized as a girl, but he was a male cat the whole time. And Erica found him and treated him as the gender he always was, respecting him for who he is. Since the two seem almost inseparable, I imagine that Wolfie found a way of communicating his gender to Erica. Now, there's just two more holes to deal with. Wolfie is a cat, not a human. I agree. Biologically, Wolfie is indeed a cat. 
Psychologically, however, Wolfie has a human understanding of the world, its constructs, and how everything operates, including the human construct of gender identity. Therefore, Wolfie would understand that, and he would be able to communicate his gender to Erica, the other cats he meets, and can rely on Erica and her friends to communicate his gender to others. But what about at the end of the film, where Serafina and Wolfie have kittens? This at first seems like the massive nail in the coffin of my whole argument. Until you realize this about Serafina. Serafina oftentimes overperforms her femininity. She's very dainty, hates being dirty, and speaks with a very breathy and floaty voice. I've noticed that, when given the freedom and relative safety to do so, most trans femmes will present very strongly in the feminine sense. It's more common to see trans femmes fully transition to a feminine role than it is to see trans masks fully transition to a masculine one. This, alongside my argument of the film only specifies that they had many, many, many kittens instead of which cat had the kittens, is an extremely long-winded way of saying, obviously, Serafina is also trans, and she and Wolfie are a tea for tea couple. Also, just look at the main character's dresses, and the fact that this flag was made by Monica Helms in 1999, the same year I was born, actually. And, uh, yeah, these cats are trans, and there's nothing you can do about it. Sorry, trans foes, but the best Barbie movie of all time, nay, scratch that, the best movie of all time says trans rights belongs to us, and we trans folk and our allies love it better than you ever could. That is where my script ends, I'm sorry.